quick video on how to get vertex color out of ZBrush and into Blender for a friend. Um, this is a request. So here I have a sphere with some vertex color on it. Turn it on and off so you can see the vertex color. Um, if you wanted to decimate it, I would recommend just duplicating it. And then under Z Plugins Decimation Master, which I also docked over here, preprocess it. Decimate it, it loses the vertex color. And then what we can do is just project it back on. That's why I had to duplicate it. Then we just turn off geometry, make sure RGB is turned on, project, and we can turn it on and off just to make sure that it works all right. So we lose a little bit of fidelity, but um, you know, for the most part, it looks the same. I'll go back and forth, there's just some slight differences. Polygon count, you can see 32,000 versus 1,300. Um, so yeah, big difference in the polygon counts, and that was just one one decimation down. You can go even more extreme if you want. Um, anyway, so uh, the problem with Blender is that it doesn't recognize vertex color data in OBJ, so you have to export through FBX. So under Z Plugins, same menu, you want to go to FBX export. You don't need to mess with anything, just click export. Save out your file. All right, get into Blender. And you're seeing here, um, import it. FBX. Select the file. Um, set the scale to 100 because it's going to come in really small. Import. Our object. Now, once you're in Blender, there's two different ways that you can do this. Um, the quickest, easiest way, but like isn't going to be able to be viewed in every way, is to under the display here, go to um, uh, this viewport shading mode, and then click on the down tab, and then with matte cap, I think, I think maybe yeah, it has an option for any of these. I think maybe flat. But no, it does. Okay, so. All three modes let you pick it. You just go from material to vertex, and it's already there. Um, as a side note, if I go into the object property, it should be in here as a vertex color um, selection set. So if you wanted to paint more in here, you could make a new one and then you know use the vertex painting mode in here um, to make new ones. Um, or if you just wanted to use Blender as kind of an assembly program to like viewport and render stuff, um, you can just use it as is, but this is where it lives. Um, the, what I like to do rather than just do this is, um, let me go back into here, um, select, select, uh, why does it think switch on the video? Let me go back to material. And what I like to do is go under um, not material, but shading, <clears throat> and the material, um, I like to actually put the vertex color plugged in here as a material, uh, like a texture, so that you can see it in different render modes. So you just hit spacebar, um, search, vertex, and you'll see the vertex color thing pop up. And what's nice is it has... Um, it's smart to know that there's already vertex color data on there. So the one that we looked at, remember I showed you, it was called Color, C-O-L. Um, if you had a couple of other ones, they would all show up in here, and you can actually just click on that one. So here it is. And then you just click on the little yellow circle for color and drag that over to base color, and it updates automatically in here. So now it will, it will display properly in any mode. So let's go back to modeling. to these other modes. The reason it's not showing up here is because um, we're in that cap. If I was in studio, let's see, texture. Yeah, I guess maybe this mode just doesn't show it. So this mode will, um, and this one will too, if I had lights in here. So like, for example, um, really quick, let me get the light. This is the whole point of switching over to Blender versus just keeping it in ZBrush. Scale that up a little bit, get it over. Let's increase its power. So 
So now you got light, light number one. Let's um, duplicate that. Is it blue? And it just like turns it into some backlight. I mean, this is a sphere, so there's only so much. Out of the scene, but if it was a character's head or something, you could have a nice rim light on there. And then let's do some stickers too. Just to get there. Um, but what's cool about this is now that you have a setup here, you can actually go into the material properties. Um, the vertex color is attached here, uh, but you could now give it some subsurface scattering. Um, you, know, you can play with all the fancy, fancy effects. If this is a more interesting model, um, you'd see all those effects taking place. Um, so you have full access to do whatever you want with it. That's why I like adding it as a node in the material editor. Um, yeah, and that's, that's it. So really quick to recap, go back to the ZBrush. So you decimate your model as a duplicate. You project using color data, make sure RGB is turned on, project export with the Z plugin at the X exporter, come in here, import it at 100% scale, and then um, you can display it just by clicking on you know any one of these material things and or these preview uh, renders and picking vertex. Or if you want to do it like the way that's more feature complete, you uh, go into the shading tab where you can see the material editor, you spacebar, type vertex, you'll see your vertex group there, make the node, plug the node into the channel, um, and just so we all can see it again, go back into the model tab and object mode, with it selected under the material properties, or actually under the object properties, you can see under vertex colors, the channel itself there. I uh, hope this helps, and uh, have fun.